They're the breakout characters with the most staying power. Greendale is the best school in the entire world. And I'm so sorry what I've done to it. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 minor TV characters that became series regulars. I'm afraid that's not good enough. <laughs> Diane, we're leaving. For this list, we're taking a look at TV characters that were originally intended to have minimal roles, but proved to be such scene stealers that their parts were eventually expanded upon. But we tried to help you, goddammit, now stop being such an asshole! Number 10. Saul Goodman, Breaking Bad. So if you want to make more money and uh, keep the money that you make, better call Saul! First introduced in season two of Breaking Bad, this sleazy lawyer becomes a crucial middleman who hooks Walter up with major players in the meth business. Option A, Brandon takes the deal. Option B, Brandon goes up to the penitentiary and gets his rectum resized about yay big. Given his tacky TV ads and even tackier wardrobe, Saul might not seem like the most competent consultant. I sense you're discussing my client. Anything you care to share with me? Sure, your commercials, they suck ass. <laughs> As the series progresses, however, he goes from primarily being a source of comedic relief to being a voice of reason. You'll be lucky if they let him bust glue sniffers at the hobby shop. The kids? Paging Dr. Phil, my daddy's a drug dealer, and my mommy turned him in! With street smarts, book smarts, and powerful connections, Saul cemented himself as one of the show's craftiest characters, and one who was tailor-made for a spin-off. Who can you sue? Try police departments, libraries, construction companies, school officials, cleaning services, financial institutions, local and international, your neighbors, your family members, your church, synagogue, or other religious institution. Number 9. Bernadette Rostenkowski, The Big Bang Theory. Louder! <laughs> While Amy Farrah Fowler remains an invaluable addition to this show. If that was slang, I'm unfamiliar with it. Bernadette Rostenkowski took the first step forward in expanding upon the male-dominant ensemble with more members of the fairer sex. Starting off as a potential love interest for Howard, Bernadette evolved into a great character in her own right, being sweet and soft-spoken one minute and spiteful and loud-mouthed the next. So, Dan, you have a grandson? How old is he? Seven. Oh, yeah. I remember him from the picnic. <laughs> he was one crying like a wuss the whole time. Over the years, this petite microbiologist has only gotten funnier as her voice has become more high-pitched. What? You're like the sweetest person I know. <laughs> Look at me, I should be in a tree baking cookies. We couldn't have imagined how good this show would get from the moment that we met you, Bernadette. I couldn't have imagined how good my life would get from the moment that I met you, Bernadette. Number eight, Benjamin Ben Linus, Lost. Well, I've found sometimes that friends can be significantly more dangerous than enemies, John. Initially slated to only appear in three episodes, Michael Emerson was quickly brought on board full time as Benjamin Linus after his first appearance in season two. So you gonna tell me your story, Henry? Why bother? I've already told it to everyone. Jack, Locke, the big black guy that cut off his beard in front of me. Formerly known as Henry Gale, Ben broke out as one of the show's most complex and enigmatic characters. Well, for starters, I wasn't born on this island. Always keeping the audience guessing, it was rarely clear if the mysterious leader of The Others was a diabolical mastermind manipulating everyone else or another lost soul searching for answers. You probably think I'm the leader of this little community. But that's not entirely true. We all answer to someone, John. All we knew for sure was that everybody on the island treated him like a human punching bag. You people have been looking for someone to punish for everything that's happened to you. Someone to blame, and now you've got him. Whether he deserved it is up to you. You're looking for this? <laughs> Number seven, Fraser Crane, Cheers. Well, we won't. I appreciate your candor. No, you don't. You're right. I feel like striking you. After breaking things off with Sam Malone, bar waitress Diane Chambers soon found a new romantic partner in her psychiatrist, Dr. Fraser Crane. I'm free of it now, Fraser. I'm free of so many things now that I've fallen in love with you. It would have been easy to make Fraser a throwaway rebound guy, but the show's writing staff and Kelsey Grammer's performance molded him into an immortal character. 
There's no such thing as a former patient. I think you'll find that once you've been a patient of mine, I'm always there when you... Oh, great. I'll bet this is important. Even after Diane broke his heart, Frazier still stuck around to provide the occasional unwanted psychoanalysis for his less sophisticated friends. Don't you see what you're doing here? You feel guilty, at least subconsciously, for rejecting me, and that's causing you to act out. Then, when Cheers ended its historic run in 1993, Frazier continued to live on with an equally successful and long-running series of his own. I like her from a distance. You know, the way you like the sun. Maris is like the sun, except without the warmth. Number 6. Harley Quinn, Batman the Animated Series Right, Harley girl? Shut up, Mr. J! Created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, Harley Quinn started off as a henchwoman for the Joker. Gonna call in a specialist, boss? Since debuting in 1992, however, this fan favorite has exploded as arguably the most beloved baddie in Batman's rogues gallery. To show Mr. J I could really pull off one of his plans. See, he could never get these fishies to smile. But then I had the bright idea of hanging the victim. Where the other dames on Batman always looked so serious, Harley was funny, ditzy, and surprisingly lovable. You didn't say which gun! At the same time, she could also be homicidal, cunning, and posed a genuine threat to the caped crusader. I'm sick of people trying to shoot me, run me over, and blow me up! Plus, Harley possessed one of the show's darkest backstories and an identifiable, hopeless devotion to her abusive puddin'. Sure, my puddin's a little temperamental. But gee, what relationship doesn't have its ups and downs? Number 5. Daryl Dixon, The Walking Dead. My day just gets better and better, don't it? This is a show where almost any character can die at any time. But Daryl Dixon is one character we all hope makes it to the end. Originally conceived as a redneck loner, Daryl got off to a rocky start with his group. No thanks to his brother Merle. Doesn't matter, man. I just can't go with you. You know, I may be the one walking away. But you're the one that's leaving. Again. Since then, however, this crossbow-wielding survivalist has developed into a loyal second-in-command and truly part of the family. Stay off the main roads. The bigger the road, the more walkers, more assholes like this one. I got them. Experienced in hunting and willing to get his hands dirty when others won't or can't, he is somebody we would all want on our side during a walker apocalypse. I will beat your ass into the ground. You hear me? Number 4. Elmo, Sesame Street Elmo has a question for you! Yeah, you! Elmo is the very epitome of adorableness, which is saying a lot given the other lovable monsters that populate Sesame Street. Oh, it fell out of the sky, Oscar sneezed in it, and, and then Oscar threw it in his can. Elmo sees! <laughs> A background character for years until the mid-80s, puppeteer Kevin Clash fashioned Elmo into a timeless character with childlike innocence and wide-eyed optimism. Elmo had two ducks, quack, quack, two birds of a feather, quack, quack. Since his rise to stardom, Elmo has made appearances on talk shows, starred in various TV specials, and has even gotten his own segment on the long-running educational kids show. Well, open up your door and be like me. Open up your door and then breathe free. Look at all the beauty you feel. Love, 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 love. Through Elmo's world, he continues to teach youngsters all about everyday life and how to constantly refer to oneself in the third person. Can you tell Elmo how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Oh, 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 hi! Number three, Leopold Butter Stotch, South Park. Everyone knows it's Butters. Well, that's me. Another character that blended into the background for a while, Butters slowly progressed into one of the series creator's favorite South Park residents. Oh, you mean like the time you washed my mouth out with soap for saying nutsack in front of Grandma? Yeah, I need to behave myself. When Kenny seemingly got killed off for good in season five, this naive lackey was a natural choice to fill the fourth friend spot. And do all the kids at school make fun of you? They sure do. 
They always say to me, Butters, you're not Kenny. But I never said I was Kenny. They say Kenny would do this and Kenny would do that. He has since been shunned by his so-called pals, but is still frequently used as a pawn in their schemes. If Butters won't even put his balls on his chin for us, guess we know where we stand. Despite constantly getting ridiculed by his schoolmates and wrongfully grounded by his parents, but you can just take those balls off your chin and march right up to your room. Yes, ma'am. Butters remains a cheerful ray of sunshine. That is, until Professor Chaos shows up. Prepare, little town. Prepare for the greatest supervillain you've ever seen. Professor Chaos! Number two, Arthur Fonzi Fonzarelli, Happy Days. Line right up here, kiss the Fonz for a buck. Now that's a bargain at any price. <laughs> Although he appeared in every episode of Happy Days, the Fonz was not intended to be more than a secondary character at first. That old lady happens to be my grandmother, what about it? As the personality grew in popularity, though, he matured and became Richie's closest chum, a tenant at the Cunningham household and the series' top billed star. The fact is, I played chess. You played with her chest? At one point, ABC even suggested retitling the show Fonzie's Happy Days. Encompassing everything one could want in a best friend, it isn't that surprising Fonzie won the whole world over. Hey, Fonz! Hey, Fonz! Hey, a new machine! Yeah. All right, clear the field! Even after jumping the shark, he was still the king of cool. Before we promote our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Look at me. Stop. This is my sister's Jeffrey. outfit. Stop. You've hit gold. Save some for the screen. We were happy. <laughs> Did you stick a penny in there? No, I was just making small talk. If I find a penny in there, I'm taking you down. And the... The entire government of Pawnee would like to let you know that we will do everything we can to help you. Did you pass me my itch stick? In fact, it's pretty freaking unfunny! <laughs> Number one, Steve Urkel, Family Matters. Urkel, why don't you ever knock? Well, if I did, nobody would ever let me in. It's hard to believe Steve Urkel didn't appear in the first several episodes of this long-running show. I have to tell you, Mr. Winslow, when my dad said you fixed me up with Laura, well, I thought I'd wet my pants! When the character made a guest appearance halfway through season one, however, he literally stole the show from the Winslows. I hope you don't mind if I stay a while. My parents told me not to come home till 10. Through Urkel's influence, Family Matters became less of a family sitcom and at times more of a sci-fi comedy. This chemical compound will make me cool. The Winslows remained a major part of the ludicrous stories, with Urkel's inventions taking them everywhere from Paris to back in time. It's my latest invention! You're looking at the world's first time machine! But let's be honest, this iconic nerd is the heart and soul that kept Family Matters going for nine years. Cute dog! I think he likes me! <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Wise choice. What other minor characters rightfully got upgraded to regulars? I just want to go to a party, Mom. I don't want to change the world. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Say goodbye, everybody. Good day. And good night. Let's go.